particularly one of the most famous examples of that, if you like, uh, and that's uh, Fred, due to Fred Hoyle, who was an atheist astrophysicist. Interesting background to Fred Hoyle because originally he uh, was opposed to the Big Bang because he thought it meant that the universe had an origin and if it had an origin in time, you might need a god to make it. Now, Theologians are, you know, more blasé about that, but Hoyle, as an atheist, was tr really troubled by that. And he proposed a, the steady-state theory the, uh, instead, which was eventually overthrown. But, and the Big Bang reigns supreme. But Hoyle did some really, really important work on how the chemical elements uh, of which uh, the stars, of the planets, and uh, ultimately us, uh, of what, what are made. Um, and he discovered that you need a very, very fine balance of the forces in nature in order to make carbon inside stars, which is essential for life, and in order to make oxygen uh, without destroying all the carbon in the process. So two uh, seeming coincidences necessary uh, in order to, to get the materials for life. And when Hoyle made that discovery, he was moved to remark that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics and with all of chemistry and biology and that there are no blind forces worth speaking about in nature. It's a put-up job, it was the kind of way he expressed it. He was deeply impressed by this and, and here you have uh, an, an atheist, a man who called religion an illusion and he uh, said that in books and uh, on TV programs in the early 50s and so on. Here's a man who, uh, with that kind of background, talked about a super intellect monkeying with physics.